ました。A spectre is haunting the world. The livelihoods of nearly a billion people could be at risk. Worldwide, farmlands nearly the size of the United States could turn into a dust bowl. Desertification is on the march. Countries are consuming too much water. The land is being overburdened by too many people, too much livestock, and too many harvests. 2006 is the UN's International Year of Desertification. Worldwide, agriculture is using up fresh water faster than rainfall can replenish it. To make up the deficit, farmers are drawing on finite reserves of groundwater. Now these too are becoming exhausted. Worse, in coastal areas, some are turning saline. For as fresh water is removed, seawater seeps in through porous rocks to take its place. This man-made phenomenon is literally salting the earth ruining crops and poisoning wells. In our final program of the series, we go to the Indian state of Gujarat, where more than a thousand villages are in the front line against the salt invasion. All over the world, seawater is intruding on coastal land at an alarming rate. Here in Gujarat and the Arabian Sea, the saline water is advancing on what was fertile agricultural land at a rate of half a kilometer per year affecting the livelihoods of over a thousand villages. Padma de Modaran works with poor communities to raise awareness of rural issues. A former business correspondent for the Times of India, she became interested in the problems of coastal Gujarat when she was sent to the region to cover a story on the erosion of traditional skills. First stop for Padma this time around is a meeting with Alka Palrecha Rawal, an expert on seawater contamination. Alka, why is the problem of salinity so severe in Gujarat? The Gujarat coast and particularly the coast of Saurashtra and Kutch is lined with two kinds of stones. One is Kutch bed and the other is limestone. Both these stones, as you can see, is very, very porous in nature. Sometimes the, actually the caverns are formed, nine feet tall caverns are formed and a kilometer long. That way actually the penetration of seawater has happened from 7 to 12 kilometers on the coast of Saurashtra and Kutch in Gujarat. Two years ago, with funds from the Aga Khan Foundation and the state government, Alka Rawal founded an action group to come up with practical solutions to the salinity problem. Fluent in the local language, Alka is the perfect guide for Hindi-speaking Padma. Agriculture is booming in Gujarat. According to India's National Bank for Rural Development, the state has witnessed a 12% growth in the farming sector in just two years. Increased production has meant increased demand for water, and according to a study by the Gujarat state government, for every cubic meter of fresh water taken from the ground, 40 cubic meters of seawater intrude. To gauge precisely the extent of the problem, Alka's Salinity Action Group runs a mobile water testing facility. This test is regularly conducted by us. Actually, we uh, see that the quality of water, what people drink, should be at least known to them. This is the water people drink. Let's test. The results take about an hour to come through. Time enough for a saucer of hopefully salt-free tea. The result is highly I mean, saline. It's around 6,000 ppm. PPM is parts per million in uh, a liter of water. According to the World Health Organization, it should be around 500 ppm, but it is 12 times more. So we are just in the fully saline zone, and this is not drinkable water. 
A government report of 2004 concluded that over 1,500 villages in coastal Gujarat, around 45% of the total, no longer have access to drinkable water. Before this hand pump was built four years ago, these women had no choice but to drink the dangerously salty water in their own wells. They have skin rashes, graying of hair, maybe some falling of hair also, and um, rashes all over the body. And of course, kidney stones, which are the major problems because of bathing or consuming the high salt content water here. Local health charities estimate that 12% of Gujaratis suffer from kidney stones and they don't take long to develop. This child's name is Gopal. He told uh, his cousin to take, uh, to take him to the doctor. And they went to the doctor and such a big stone was found in his kidneys. Salinity has turned fresh or sweet water into a valuable commodity. Rambai and Virgi Bain are, are basically carrying uh, this water to uh, a fishing village. Members of the fishing village will pay him about 250 rupees for a can of 50 litres, which is provided daily. That is 250 rupees per month and they get a can of 50 litres a day. Curiously enough, communities living next to the sea aren't always the worst affected. The region's complex geology throws up many anomalies. This is the only sweet water well in an area of at least about two to two and a half kilometers. The ironic thing is that the only sweet water well in this area is right on the beach. And they do have wells in their own fields, but that water has long turned saline. Households have contributed to the rising demand for groundwater. So too have industries such as limestone quarrying and cement making. But the biggest culprit by far is agriculture. The Green Revolution of the 1960s turned India from a famine-prone country into one of the world's major food exporters. That agricultural achievement was made possible in part by a huge increase in groundwater pumping. In the mid-1950s, fewer than 100,000 mechanized pumps were extracting groundwater for farming in India. Today, there are reportedly 20 million. This exponential increase in extraction rates means that ancient supplies never before tapped are being sucked dry. Today's farmers are feeling the consequences. This is Keshubhai's farm and it's amazing how this man has managed to survive despite not having sweet water in his land. About 22 years back, when he dug his well, he found that there was only salt water in it. But this problem of salinity has actually reduced his income by almost two-thirds, a problem that is seen in many other places. Places like Jeevabai's coconut farm. These coconut trees look healthy enough, but appearances can be deceptive. Before my well went saline, each of my trees would produce around 50 coconuts. Now the average is 20 to 30, so my production has halved. The coconut taste itself is saline. Yes, because I of that. Yeah, you yeah, could notice yeah. that, yeah. So that is what he mentioned, that in some of the varieties, the salinity in coconut comes faster, and okay. in others it is slower, but it does come. If taste matters in the coconut market, so too does size. This coconut was grown here, which is a saline area, whereas this coconut was brought from a neighboring sweet water area. As you can see, they're both different in size. This would fetch only two rupees in the market, and this would get the farmer four rupees. See, the whole point is to grow any other crop, he'll have to remove these coconuts. And if he removes the coconuts, he will have to Wait, wait for five to six years for land to be again ready for another crop because the roots of the coconut are very deep inside. As profits plummet, some farmers are looking for alternative livelihoods. 